Okay, so this week I want to basically just do some sound design. This is something I really enjoyed doing on Logic Pro on the iPad Pro, and I thought it would be kind of cool to show you how I do it. So there are a lot of ways to go about sound design, but I think the most core element is loading a MIDI track and basically hitting this little icon here to bring up the track details and we'll put an instrument in here. Let's start with this synthesizer and let's do the retro synth. So first we're just going to see this really simple version and if we click into it we get a lot more information. Now if we wanted to, we could tap on default preset and now we can see all of these presets that have already been made. But we're going to start with the default and we're not going to worry about the rest of it. It already sounds really nice, so we can already see the filters in place. Let's make like a pad. So let's increase the release on the filter and the amp, and let's increase the attack on the filter and the amp. the voice detail. Increase cutoff by LFO. And where is our LFO? I don't know. Right here. This is already really pretty. And it already has velocity sensitivity, which is cool. Right now they're both saws. Now one of them is a triangle, the oscillators. And run a 50-50 mix. Now it's all saw, now it's all triangle. So that's cool, um, but let's add some effects. So the first effect I would probably want to add here, I'm gonna add a chorus. Increase the intensity, increase the mix just a little bit. like maybe some kind of distortion, a little bit of overdrive. I do have other audio units from other developers though. Try Blease Delay. It's the Blease Analog Delay. Let's give it a reverb. I've actually been really enjoying the black hole reverb, reverb from even side. Lower the mix a little bit. And now we basically have a really nice M83 type pad.
And now if we zoom out, we can see this is actually kind of like Ableton if you've ever used it. We have this little lower quarter or lower section chain of effects and synths. And we can rearrange it if we hit the edit button, but I actually like this arrangement. But what we can also do is hold, or actually I think it's just tap, yep. And we can save the patch. So let's call this um, M83 pad. And now if I go into browser and I go into my instrument patches, I can see M83 pad there. And if I drag it over to a new slot, it has all of those effects that I've added, including third party effects and the presets and parameters they were at, as well as the retro synth. And we can see this with other things. So I, I did a little bit of tweaking to Module Pro's 90s piano. If I turn off the effects I added, this is 90s piano, although I have turned off the, uh, I thought I turned off, yes, the reverb so that I could add my own. I added some gain, added some EQ, tape delay. <laughs> and then I was able to save that. And so all of these here in my instrument patches are patches that I made, which is kind of self-explanatory, but still cool. And uh, this is one of the features that I said was missing on the Ableton Push 3 or the Push standalone, is the ability to just do these kind of sound design sessions. And like I said, you can start with anything. It doesn't have to be uh, an Apple plugin. It can be uh, an audio unit instrument of your choice. And it's gonna remember that. Uh, one key thing I will say though, is I do recommend using plugins that are stable. And I've really just focused on using only stable plugins now, instead of some of the ones in the past I used to enjoy. I will say navigation is not perfect. If I open the browser, okay, good. We're not really losing anything. Some apps do cut off and don't like, don't like kind of having to adapt here. This is not a great example plugin to mess with because it's got so much already doable in the plugin itself. Yeah, I do really recommend Submaster too. but we're probably not gonna use it for this. Wrong pencil, there we go. Yeah, let's do one with, uh, let's see, audio units. Should I have Xeon, is that Brambos? No, it's, um, I don't, I wish it kind of just showed me a list of all of them and not just the manufacturer. Like I get that it's kind of clean, but it's also like, I don't remember which manufacturer made which. I mean, I guess eventually I will. There we go, Xeon. So maybe we go to Xeon Synthwave. Maybe we go to uh, Perfect Things. And Xeon is another just really good. It's just been great for years and years. But now let's apply maybe Perforator. I love Perforator. I think it was Kurt Lawrence who suggested Perforator. Apologies if it wasn't, but... Go to the effects tab. There's no reverb on here yet. Turn off the delay. Uh, 
Let's add a reverb here. Do chroma verb. Change it to a concert hall. Bigger size, longer delay. Lower the what amount. We could do a lot more with this, but again, it's just, it's cool how easy it is to take things that already exist and tweak them and make them a new chain preset. What would basically be an instrument rack, but in Ableton. And it's not like this is the only DAW that can do this. I've just found it to be pretty stable and it also seems to load them pretty quickly and be able to handle all this in a really smooth way. Call this Xeon Neo. And there we go, Xeon Neo is there. Uh, the last thing I wanna show you when it comes to sound design is sample alchemy. This is maybe the coolest feature in Logic on iPad. You can take any sample and drag it into sample alchemy. So let's load files here. And I'm already in my splice folder here. Hmm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, drop that in Sample Alchemy. Where's this browser? So right now it's just playing it once. We see that with this A here. You can choose where it starts, you can scrub. pass filter and we can add another node this is so that's arp instead of bow loop scrub the play tab in the motion tab we can and now we've recorded this Change the levels here. And this is all 
all just in sample alchemy. Increase the release. Increase the attack. And now we've made a Trent Reznor film score sound. And this is just simple alchemy again, so we could add, let's see what else we wanna add here. Maybe we add Beat Breaker on top of it as a multi-effect. Beat breaker is processing the sound it's hearing come in. And if we go to like 16 beats, it gives us a longer window, more time for each of these to affect it. Let's uh, add some even side reverb on there. Black hole over the mix. I want to increase the attack. wider, but that's not what I want here. I don't think I can automate this one. That's okay. I'm sure there's a way to do it, I just don't know how to do it yet. But yeah, this, okay, so we took a sample, put it into Sample Alchemy, added a beat breaker, added black hole. And we created our own sound, right? Turn off the two effects.
and yeah, I don't know. There's just something about this that just feels so pro. And I feel like, you know, this isn't the only app that can do this. I just really like how it handles it. And it is the only app that has so uh, sample alchemy because it's the only sample alchemy is a built-in plugin just for this app. But yeah, I'm just, I'm really impressed with sound design on here and just with this app in general. It's the main thing I've been using the last few weeks. And uh, I highly recommend checking it out. I hope you have a great week ahead. Please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you to my Patreon patrons and consider checking out my music linked in my hyper follow link below. All right, I'll catch you next week. Bye.